Hello all, welcome back to editorial analysis and answer writing practice at 9 p.m. Friends, if you are watching this video series for the first time, then please watch my first introductory video on this program, which is available in the playlist only. Please watch it, then only you'll know how to participate in this answer writing program. It is open to all, anyone can participate. So today we will discuss about the topic genetic crops because recently Supreme Court came with a split verdict uh, regarding the approval given for the environmental release of genetically modified mustard. Right, so based on this a lot of editorials uh, were in news in various newspaper. So we will discuss this topic from our exam UPSC exam point of view. Friends, listen to this video, don't make notes immediately. I will give you the notes in the description or in the comment section I will pin it. So friends were asking me to provide some slides. So I will give you a proper material. Now you just focus next 10, 15 minutes, you focus on this lecture only. Okay. So what is genetic uh, modification or GM crops? I have made a detailed video on the basics of genetic modification, which is available in our uh, office's uh, path channel only. I will give you the link in the description. You can watch it, right? So basics of GM, you please watch that video. So genetically modified crops, these are crops which are engineered genetically in such a way to introduce new traits. For example, if you take BT cotton. So in BT cotton, what is the genetic modification we have done? We have taken a regular cotton. This regular cotton is facing a lot of pest attack. There is a particular worm called as bollworm. This bollworm that used to attack this cotton and the production productivity of the cotton greatly comes down. So to overcome this problem, BT cotton variety was introduced. So BT is nothing but that refers to a particular soil bacterium. So, so Bacillus thuringiensis is the soil bacterium. That bacteria, from that bacteria, two specific genes were taken. It was attached with the regular cotton plant. And now the cotton plant is genetically modified. So we are referring it as BT cotton. So this BT cotton will show resistance to the bollworm attack. So now this cotton is so strong, this cotton plant, BT cotton plant is so strong, the bollworm cannot attack. So that is the beauty of this genetic modification. Now what is the problem? It looks interesting, right? But there are people supporting the growth of GM crops. There are people opposing the growth of GM crops as well. So let's understand some facts about this GM crops. Worldwide, if you see, almost 75 plus percentage of GM crops, genetically modified crops, is coming from America, Argentina, and Brazil only. Almost 200 million hectares of land area globally is devoted for the growth of GM crops. If you take India, Almost 6% uh, of global GM crops is produced from India. Almost 11 plus million hectares of land area in India is devoted for the production of genetically modified crops. Now, what is the problem in this GM crops? But before knowing the problems, let's understand the advantages of growing GM crops. See, today, look at uh, the world population. The world population has crossed almost 800 crores. If you take India in specific, we are almost 140 crore populated country. The population is increasing year after year. So there is a need for increased protection of food grains because population is increasing. So we need to feed more number of people. The cultivable area is static that is not going to expand much. So we need to increase our production and productivity. So to meet the increasing food security needs, we need to produce more. So such genetic modification can improve the production and productivity of the crops. And look at the climate change. Climate is changing, globe is getting warmer, temperature is increasing, erratic rainfall pattern, right? Frequent cyclones, there is frequent droughts. So we need plants which can adapt to this changing climatic conditions. We need plants which can tolerant, which can be tolerant for uh, droughts. So drought resistant crop we need to come up with. See, because of global warming, the glaciers are melting down. Because of the glacier meltdown, the sea level is rising. Because of the rise in sea level, you will see a lot of sea water intruding into the coastal areas. The coastal areas, the land will become more saline. So we need saline tolerant crops. We need temperature tolerant crops. 
we need drought resistant crops we need adaptable crops so how can we bring all these things it can be done only through genetic modification and also if you want to improve the freshness of the crop shelf life of the crop if you want to improve we can do genetic modification see if you take country like india every year close to 1 lakh crore worth of farm produce is being wasted because of lack of proper cold storage facilities so i am a tomato producing farmer how many days i can you know keep the tomato open if there is a cold storage facility i can put it in the fridge and i can maintain it fresh for longer time if not maybe 3 days 4 days 5 days the tomato might be fresh later it will perish but however, with, see, we cannot improve the infrastructure of India immediately. But if we genetically modify the tomato, if the tomato becomes more fresher, let's say for 20 days, 30 days, if it is going to stay fresher, the farmer will be benefited. The farmer need not go and immediately invest on cold storage facilities. Right. So to improve the shelf life, we can go for genetic modification. To withstand the climate change, we can go for genetic modification. To improve the food security, we can go for genetic modification. To improve the nutritional security, food security means availability of food. The food should be nutritious. To make the food nutritious, we can go for genetic modification. Look at the BD cotton case. We see a lot of pest growing today. Because of this rise in temperature, when the temperature is increasing, that will result in more growth of pest. So you will see a lot of pest attack in future. So to prevent the crops from these pest attack, we can go for genetic modification. We know about weeds. Weeds refers to unwanted plants. See in the farmland, if I am growing rice, there will be some unwanted plants which will also be grown parallelly. It will be growing naturally, it will be growing parallelly. That is not good, that is harmful for our rice cultivation. These unwanted plants has to be removed. So for which farmers will spray herbicide, weedy side. This weedy side will kill the weeds, unwanted plants will be killed. But this weedy side is poisonous that can affect our rice or regular plants also. So we need to have a weedy side or herbicide tolerant plant varieties. Right? For all this and also simply to improve the farmer's income also. If I am able to produce more, if I am able to produce more food grains in a limited piece of land, then farmer will be benefited. So farmer's income can also be improved. Right? So there are so many good things, right? Uh, because of genetic modification. Then why there are opponents who are opposing this GM crops? See, by introducing new genes from some other species, you are making the regular species newer. For example, let's assume tomato. I have a regular tomato. I take genes from some bacteria. So bacteria is altogether a different species. From that, I take some genes and I insert it with the tomato's uh, DNA. Now the tomato itself becomes altogether new. The genetically modified tomato which we are going to consume, that is going to be entirely a new species. So when you are going to eat that tomato, what will be the health consequence you will be having, we do not know. In short term, we cannot assess. Only in long term, we will be arriving at the consequences of this uh, genetically modified crops. So there is a health uncertainty. So that is one reason why people are opposing it. And also this genetic modification involves technology. Do you think developing countries are going to be strong in this technology? Definitely developed countries will be stronger in this technology. So such genetically modified crops will be largely manufactured in the when those seeds assume genetically modified seeds of tomato, seeds of potato that will be grown by uh, western countries, developed countries. Now these developed countries or these capitalistic countries, they can use this as an opportunity to control the developing countries affairs. They can exploit the developing countries, put it simply, I am a farmer, small farmer, marginal farmer, vulnerable farmer. If I am going to buy the seeds developed by American companies, then I will be dependent on them to again and again buy the seeds. They can exploit me. So there is a vulnerable situation for the farmers. Developing countries can be targeted by developed countries. There is a possibility which we cannot deny. I am not saying it will certainly happen. But we cannot deny this fact. And not just that. See, the relationship between the seed and the soil is so unique. 
so for thousands and thousands of years in our soil we are sowing a particular type of seed that seed and soil they have a good relationship accordingly we are seeing outcome now we are introducing a new variety of seed that is going to interact with the soil what will be that relationship we do not know the soil fertility can be affected or it can be improved we do not know similarly I'll think about the web chain food chain see uh, let's say I am that uh, worm, pink ball worm attacking the cotton. See, for the pink ball worm, that cotton is the food. So, by making the cotton uh, resistant to this attack, so over a period, the pink ball worm will not eat this cotton because the cotton is poisonous now. Now, over a period, what happens? The pink ball worm will become extinct. A species will become extinct. Right? Depending on pink ball worm, there can be other species. Other species also because of lack of food, they might starve and they might go extinct. So biodiversity can be affected. Flora fauna will be affected. We do not know how the consequences will be disastrous. Right? So what will be the uh, health, health reaction? That's health that's uncertainty. What will be the soil reaction? Soil uncertainty. What will be the relationship between that capitalistic seed producing companies and the farmers? that is uncertain right this can be an opportunity used by developed countries to control developing countries what will be the relationship there is uncertainty right and also biodiversity can be affected what will be the consequence of introducing this gm crops how it is going to affect the biodiversity there is uncertainty now because of all these reasons gm crops uh, has to be opposed that is what opponents are saying Right, so we have uh, good positive points and also we have uh, valuable concerns as well. Right, so if you take the uh, context of India, if you take the context of India, so here uh, we have Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee under the Ministry of Environment. Uh, we have Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee which will be giving the first level of approval for growing GM crops. That means GEAC will give first level of approval, but the second level, the final level of approval will be given by Ministry of Environment only. So GEAC approval alone is not sufficient. As of today, GEAC has given approval for cotton, BT cotton, genetically modified mustard and genetically modified brinjal. For these three items, GEAC has given approval. But if you take the government side, government has given approval for the growth of BT cotton only. So government has not cleared the growth of GM mustard or GM brinjal. Right? So now in this backdrop, in this backdrop, as I said, GEAC has given approval for the environmental release. They have recommended that, okay, we can go for environmental release of GM mustard in India. But however, this created a lot of debates. Now, it even went to Supreme Court to block the release of this GM mustard. See, GEAC has given environmental release. That means GEAC has said, okay, now we can consider uh, producing more uh, genetically modified mustard seeds. And also we will try some field trial. That is, GEAC has asked the Indian research uh, universities to use this BT mustard and to check the consequences. So how it is reacting with the soil, how it is affecting other microorganisms, other you know biotic, abiotic components. So for this purpose, GEAC has given some uh, recommendation. But however, opposing this, opposing this, people went to Supreme Court and recently Supreme Court has come up with a split verdict. So now the case is referred to the higher bench. That higher bench will be coming up with their opinion regarding the release of GM mustard. Now, since GM mustard, mustard is in news, we should, we should know something about mustard as well. So, mustard is grown during Rabi season. In India, the northwest, Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, in these regions, you will find growth of uh, mustard. So, if you take India, we are having a deficit with respect to oil seeds. Almost 60 percentage of our edible oil consumption is from imports only. We are meeting it through imports only. For example, sunflower oil majority coming from Ukraine, Russia, 
uh, palm oil coming from Indonesia, Malaysia, like that 60% of our oil needs are met through imports. We are not self-reliant with respect to edible oil. And also the mustard quality which we have today is also not so great. For one hectare, one to 1 1.3 million tons of mustard can be produced in India. But if we consider with Europe, in Europe they produce 3 million tons in same one hectare. In Europe, 3 million tons of mustard can be produced. But in India, only 1.2 to 1 1.3 million tons of mustard we are able to produce. So that's a huge uh, productivity gap. So we have to improve the productivity. Now you might think to improve the productivity, why don't we go for hybridization? So hybrid variety we would have studied. That is through cross pollination. We have a poor yielding crop. We have a higher yielding crop. We will cross both the crop. So there will be better yielding uh, next generation. This is hybridization. This hybridization is not so effective in every crop, particularly with respect to mustard. This hybridization is going to be very challenging. The reason is the mustard, the mustard plant has both male reproductive organ and the female reproductive organ. The plant has both, that is the uh, stamen, that is the male reproductive organ and the pistil, the female reproductive organ, both are present in the same mustard plant. So it is self-pollinating, right? So when there is self-pollination, so coming up with some hybridization is going to be very challenging. So genetic modification is going to be the uh, only way out to improve its production productivity. So with respect to our genetically modified mustard, we have introduced two uh, bacterial genes. One is called as Barnes and another one is called as uh, Burster, just for your reference. So by introducing these genes into our mustard variety, we are trying to make it uh, more productive. Right, we are making it more productive. So that is what we have tried. But however, uh, going against the approval given by the GEAC, uh, the case went to Supreme Court and Supreme Court has given a split verdict. So let's wait for the higher bench verdict to know what is going to happen next. So yes, now you tell me in the comment section, what is your opinion about uh, growing GM mustard in India? Uh, do you think that uh, we can grow GM crops in India or worldwide? What is your viewpoint? So I have given you a list of points regarding positives and negatives. You give me your opinion. So I hope uh, this editorial analysis was useful. So now I'll give you a question. Now based on this question, so you can submit the answers in the comment section. So how to participate in this answer writing? Please watch my first video. Discuss the current legal and regulatory framework governing GM crops in India. Do you agree with the view that GM crops are necessary to feed the world? So it's a 15 marker question. So you have to write 250 words. So previous topic I gave a 10 marker question. So now it is 15 marker question. So plan your answer accordingly. So tomorrow I will see you with another interesting editorial analysis. Till then, bye, take care.